Hi everyone, in this video for faculty, I'll be explaining how to use comms or the course outline mapping management system um, in order to input, verify, or update your course outlines for the upcoming academic year. Uh, before I log in, I'll just give you um, a bit of an intro to what comms is. So there are two parts to comms. Part one is the course outline document and part two is the course section information. So regarding part one of comms, the course outline document, this document is created directly within the comms program and it will generate a PDF um, of your course outline. So some people might refer to this as the parent document. Um, generally, there will be only one faculty member assigned to be the course outline writer for a specific course. And this person will enter, verify, and or update the course outline document once a year. And once it's completed, it's publicly available on the George Brown College website. Okay, so I'm going to log in now and show you how to enter, verify, or update the course outline document. Uh, later on in the video, I'll go through part two, which is the course section information. So the right one, right now we're on part one, updating the course outline document. So I'm going to log in. So now that you see that I'm logged in, there's this black ribbon at the top and you can see that it confirms I've logged into the right department in which this course is offered through. So when you log in, you should see your home department at the top. Okay, so now let's take a look at the menu on the left-hand side of the screen. As a faculty member assigned as the course outline writer, I need to find my course and then verify and update any information. So for example, if the course was originally entered into the system by someone else, you'll need to double check that it was entered correctly, or perhaps there are some changes or updates that need to be entered for the upcoming year. So in this home section here, um, you will see the title course outline writer followed by some other options and under here this section course outline writer again you can also see all the courses offered by your department so however in my department we only have the one course so I could click on quick edit and this will take me directly to the course outline information however I'm going to go back Clicking here and I'm gonna actually start from this course outline writer option because this will allow me to see more options available for me so I'm gonna click on this okay so and then here's where you can see course section information document which is part two of the video but we're focusing on this part editing the course outlines so again I'm gonna go under here and find my course um, and I'm gonna click on edit so the sections below here will let me know if any courses have been submitted or if I've submitted a course and if a course outline has been approved. So in my case, nothing has been submitted or approved. In your case, you might see a number of courses that have been submitted and maybe they are or are not approved yet. Um, but step one, we just wanna go through and edit this course outline. So I'm going to click on here again, make sure that all of this is the correct information. I'm choosing the right course and I'm going to click on edit. Okay. So here's where I have, um, the course information and these quick links on the right side, these tell me all the pieces of the course outline. These all represent and will take me to the various sections of the course outline document. So if I'm just updating something, I can click on that section to update it. For example, perhaps the textbook has a new version and I only need to update that. I can just click there and go to that section and update that information. Um, you can also see in here there's some sections in red and this indicates that there are some issues with these sections. Perhaps something is misaligned. However, especially if it's the first time I'm looking at the course outline in this program and someone has entered it for me, I need to start from the top down to make sure that everything is correct. So the system does not actually catch any spelling mistakes or if resources are out of date, it's not going to catch that. So I want to start from the beginning. Okay, so I'm going to check to make sure that my course out information is correct. And the first part of that my course outline template should be basic. 
okay? And if it is not basic, if there's something else listed there, I need to click on Edit. And then from this drop-down menu, I would choose Basic. Perhaps it's unspecified or it's, it's on something else, but Basic is what it should be on. So I'm going to save that. Okay, and then I'm going to review the course description to make sure that that is correct. If it is not correct or if I need to make updates, as faculty or the course outline writer, I don't actually have permissions in the system to change it. So this is where I would need to contact the comms administrator in my department. So just make a note of the changes and then email that person and then keep moving forward. Um, which again would be to check this information. So I want to make sure that the co-requisites and prerequisites that this information is correct. However, I can't actually edit it on this page. As you can see, I cannot edit it. Okay, it does show up. You'll get the opportunity to do this later on. It'll come, it'll give you that option as we go through. So we're just going to click on next. Okay, so now I'm in the essential employability skills. And again, the system um, automatically identified that there are some issues there because of the red. So I can see here that this course is not associated with an essential employability skills. So based on the course, I need to identify um, of these 11 essential employability skills, which ones are taught, T for taught, which ones are practiced, P for practiced, and which ones will be evaluated, so the E is for evaluate, in this course. The C here means culminate, but we're actually disregarding um, this option, so just ignore this altogether. Uh, just pretend you don't even see it. Um, but we want to identify, again, which of these skills are taught and or practiced and or evaluated. So I need to choose those. And as you can see, as I click here, it won't let me do anything. So I need to go down here and click on edit. Okay, so now I'm going to make these changes. So once I've made those changes, I'm going to hit save. Okay, so now you can see um, in green what's, what's been, what the change is, and in red it has now disappeared. Okay, so I'm going to go on to next. Okay, and then this takes me to my course learning outcomes. So again, I just need to go through and double check that they are in there correctly, that there's any updates, I need to make any changes to them. So here I can see there's something missing with this outcome. So I need to fix that. And then this one, this formatting is completely off. Um, so I need to fix those things. And to do that, I just click on the pencil, which is the edit. I'm going to do that now. And then I need to add my appropriate verb from Bloom's Taxonomy. And I'm going to save it. And then it will update. Okay. And then this one here also, I need to fix that to make sure the formatting is the same. So I'm going to click on the pencil again. And in this case, I, I've clicked on the text and I can see it was actually a heading. And I don't want this to be a heading. I just want normal text. So I'm going to highlight it all. Just click normal. And then I'm going to save it. Um, the other thing I wanted, I can do is, for example, if the order of this is different, um, you can use the up arrow or the down arrow, arrow if you have to change the order of these. Um, if you have to add a new course learning outcome, you can just click on add new and then again you fill that in. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm just going to hit next and it will take me to the next section. Okay, so now I am at the delivery methods and the learning activities. So I want to make sure, check that this is correct. If it's correct, I can go on to next. If not, I just click on edit. Again, make the changes, click save, and go on. Okay, so in my case, everything's fine. I'm going to go on to next. Okay, so now I'm at learning resources. So perhaps you have to update your textbook or your materials are available. You want to say they're available on Blackboard or um, learners are required to participate in teams. Um, you can add that in 
there. And in this case, I'm not 100% sure that everyone knows what Teams is, so I'm gonna edit that just to clarify for the learners. So in class and on, this is actually Office, oops, Office 365 Teams. So hopefully that will make more sense to people. I'm gonna save it and then I'm gonna go on to Next. Okay, so now we are at the additional course information. And here you can see is where, if you need to update the co or prerequisites, this is where you would do this. So perhaps there's a prerequisite, um, a course that students need to take before they can take this one, or maybe there's another semester course that's happening at the same time that they have to take with this course. So you can update that information in here and you would type that in there and then you would save it. In my case, this is fine. So I'm just gonna leave it as it is and save. Okay, so also you have the option of including program related information. Um, most likely you will have this ticked off and this will include the program related information for the specific program that your course belongs to. In my case, I don't have this. This is, it's not part of a program. The next part, so I'm gonna leave that. The next part is school-related information. So you wanna double check that this information is correct. So here's a big um, issue. The teaching and learning exchange is part of the whole college. It's not actually part of the School of Animal Studies. So this is a big issue. But when I scroll to the bottom, I cannot edit anything else. So on this page, the additional course information section, I can only edit the co and prerequisites. Okay, so again, as faculty member or course outline writer, I only have permissions to certain things. And this means I do not have permissions to change this information. So I need to make a note of this, that this is incorrect. And I'm gonna let my comms administrator in my department know this. So they have a different permissions level and they'll be able to update this. The other thing is that this text, there are issues with this text. So I also want to flag this for the comms administrator that this needs to be fixed as well. Okay, so at this point, there's nothing else I can do on this page. So I'm just gonna click on next. Okay, so now I am at the student evaluation system, which is here. And again, the system identified in red that there are issues with this. Um, again, this is where the system will um, identify whether things are missing or, or misaligned, uh, but it doesn't identify any spelling mistakes or, for example, I've added a new assessment. Um, it's not going to identify if that's in there, so I'm going to have to manually th add that in there. So the first thing I want to do is double check that I have the right assignments in here. As I can see, this one has been, um, the course learning outcomes are mapped. However, there are no essential employability skills mapped. So I'm going to do that first. In fact, this is all of them. I'm going to save it. So now that's been done. But again, you can see I still have the red there. So I, I need to keep going because there's still issues here. Okay, there we go. No learning outcomes or EES have been selected for the rest of these assignments. And in fact, I'm actually missing an assignment. So there's two reflective papers in this course and I can see that there's only one. Okay, so I'm gonna actually add another evaluation. I need to add my reflective paper number two. So I'm gonna do that and I can choose it from a drop down menu. I'm gonna actually look and see if that's a possibility in here. Hopefully it just doesn't make you dizzy as I'm scrolling through here. There's tons of assignments you can see, but the one for this course is reflective paper. Okay, here it is, number two, paper number two. The actual description, I'm gonna put that in the course section information. That's where I'm gonna add more detail. So I'm gonna leave it like that. And then in this course, the assignments are just pass fail. So I'm gonna choose that. If I can't find the assessment type that's listed, I need to contact the comms supporter, the comms administrator person in my department to see if they can add that assignment in there. In my case, I have found what I needed, I've added it, and I'm gonna save it. I still have the red here, so I need to go through now, and I need to 
align the course learning outcomes and the EES with the, each of these assignments. So which ones are being evaluated through this assignment? So I'm going to click on the pencil. And now I need to choose here. Okay, oh, look at that. Now there's no red here. So that means that this has been aligned. Okay, so I'm not gonna stop there though. I still need to keep going through the system to make sure that everything is correct. So I'm just gonna go down to next. So now here is the PLAR or the prior, prior learning assessment and recognition. So in this case, this course is not PLAR eligible. So it's a unique program for faculty and um, they wouldn't have taken it anywhere else because it's specific for George Brown College. So in this case, there is no PLAR um, eligibility. In your course, perhaps it is, um, or let's say we've made some changes to the program. I'm gonna edit this. And then I might say, yes, it is eligible, okay? But again, in this case, it's not. So if it is not for your course, you need to explain why, okay? If it is, perhaps someone's transferring from one college to another and they've taken your course um, or almost exactly the same course in that college, then perhaps it's PLAR. So then you can click there, okay? But I'm just gonna leave this as is and go on to next. Okay, so here's the grading system. So in the case of this course, it's pass, not pass, okay? However, in your course, it might be something different. So you can choose from the drop-down menu um, what it is for your course. You can choose from here. Again, if you don't see, maybe in your course it's a 75% pass, then you would contact the comms administrative person to fix that for you. So make a note of that, let them know, and then they can fix it for you. And there's nothing that you can do because there's no 75% here. So you just leave it and go on. In my case, this is correct. I'm going to hit next. So now that I've completed all of these sections of the course outline, I am ready to submit it. So first of all, I'm going to put in my name or your name um, and what your title is. So as core course outline writer or if you're a professor. So you put that information in there and if it's 100% ready you can submit for approval. However, one suggestion I have would be to preview the course outline first just to make sure that um, you've remembered, you've fixed all the mistakes. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to preview my course outline. So the system will generate a PDF so that you can go through and look at it. So just Again, you can see who's prepared it, what year it's for, but you can see right away this is still incorrect. So perhaps I've forgotten to contact my comms administrator. So I'm going to make sure that I do that before I submit it. But in lieu, uh, before I do that, I can still go through and take a look at everything that is in the course outline. So as you can see, each of these sections follows the same order as the um, comm system. I need to make sure that this is fixed before I actually submit the document, okay? I'm gonna go back to the system again and just show you the process for submitting. So let's say everything is correct now, so the comms administrator fixed those issues and it is ready for submission. Um, I'm gonna hit submit for approval. You're gonna get a pop-up box that will ask you if you're ready, if it's okay, and I'm gonna say okay. So this is where it goes to your chair. And then again, your chair has a different permissions level, so they can go into the comms and take a look at all the submitted course outlines, and then they'll also approve them through comms. So this will take you back to the course outline writer section, and you can see what you've submitted or what has been submitted. Let's say I've, I realized that I put in the wrong um, resources, so I can unsubmit, redo it, and then resubmit, okay? So now I've submitted it, and then once my chair has approved it, I will find it under this section as well, okay? So I'm just gonna go um, back home. Um, again, I can see here that it has been submitted to the department. So when you go through and you see all the courses here, you'll be able to see right away which ones have been submitted, which ones need to be quick edited.
Okay, so now let's take a look at part two of comms and the steps that you need to take for this part. So part two is the course section information document. So this is, you also submit this through comms. And this is actually a Word template that you'll receive from your department or your program. And perhaps it looks like this template or yours is a little bit different. But the course section information is a document which differentiates between the different sections of the course. So perhaps there's, you have your one course outline document in comms, the parent document, and then there are six people teaching that same course. So each instructor is going to have a different course section information document. So again, it's a Word document. It is specific for that instructor's course for their section, and it will include this very specific type of information, including the topical outline, the weekly class and evaluation schedule. Okay, so once you've filled that in, you need to save it as a PDF. Okay, and then once you've saved it as a PDF, you're gonna go into comms, and then here is where you are again in course outline writer. Okay, and then you go to course section information document, and you can click there. And then from the drop down menu here, you're just going to choose which course you're submitting your course section information. So click on that. I'm going to add my CRN. I'm going to put that in there. And then I choose the term that I'm uploading it for. So remember part one of the comms, your course outline document, that's updated once a year, whereas the course section information document is updated every semester. Okay, so there, that's where it's a little bit different as well. So I'm in my case, I'm uploading it for the fall, and I'm gonna choose my file. So remember, I've saved my Word template, my updated Word template as a PDF, and I'm gonna open it here, and then I'm gonna submit it. Okay, and now I can see that it's been submitted. Okay, so thank you so much, and I hope that this little video has shown you how to